Okay, so this video is for the Kandinsky tray. Okay, so I have a slab of clay and I kind of started to flatten it out and I will just finish rolling it out a little bit more. If your clay is wet, it's going to stick to the rolling pin, so just put a little canvas on top of it if it's sticking. Okay, this clay is kind of dry, so I'm not going to, I don't need it. Okay, so I'm just going to finish rolling this out, and I have to think about the shape of the tray that I'm going to want to do. Um, this shape I have right now would work well for a square tray or maybe something more round. But if I'm going to want it to be rectangular, then I have to I have to roll my clay to stretch it longer. And I'm going for the iPhone thickness, always with my clay. Okay, so you see I'm rolling it, trying to stretch the clay, make it longer. Make sure you're not stuck. All right, check periodically. Okay, so before I cut, I am going to use a rib, right, one of these metal ribs, just to kind of smooth it out, and I'm going to check the other side as well. It's just good practice. Anytime you're dealing with slabs, pancakes, that you rib your clay. Don't use water. Okay, I'm gonna check the back now. This is not really optional. If you don't do this step, your clay will be not smooth and it might crack when it dries. Okay, so I am going to do a rectangular tray. So I'm just gonna, you could use a ruler if you want to give yourself straight lines. Um, I'm just gonna go ahead and lightly draw a rectangle first. Try to make it as big as I can for this piece of clay. Okay, so now I'm going to cut this out. Okay, so I have my shape now gonna kind of clean it up just a little bit before I start doing anything with it. Okay, so if you're at this stage and you notice your clay is still too thick, you can still roll it. All right, you might have to clean up the lines after and cut it again, but if you feel like it's too thick, it probably is. Just roll it again. Okay. So now to get the edges to come up, I'm going to make a few little slices on the corners. Okay, so 45 degree angle, just going to miter those corners. Right, so the longer I make this line, the more extreme the walls are going to be. So I just want like a It'll probably end up being like a half an inch, three quarters of an inch wall, which is fine for a tray. Okay, so I have my little incisions. Now I'm going to start easing the clay up, right? Always ease your clay. Don't just, don't be rough, right? Clay is going to respond to you, and sometimes the response is not favorable. Okay, so I'm going to be organized about this. I'm going to bend the two short sides up first. 
So carefully, I don't, I don't want to put all these like pinch marks in it. I just want to be very careful. Trying to keep it straight, all right? Okay, so now I have these short pieces in the front. I'm going to kind of push these corners over each other, all right? So just so you can see that, I just kind of force them over each other. I'm gonna do that for all four. So then I'll kind of refine it as I go. And support your clay if you feel like you're if you're not pushing against anything then put your hand back there okay so I'm just kind of starting to bring this wall up a little bit I'm just supporting it with my left hand and I'm using my index finger to kind of slowly bring up this ledge okay so now I'll do the other corner I'm just going to force one in front of the other. So now I have more of a curved rectangle. Okay, I'm going to start easing this one up as well. A little bit of pinch bending. Don't want to deform my wall. And I'm just using my thumb and my index finger to kind of keep it nice and clean and straight while I kind of add a little bending pressure. Okay, so these in the front force overlap. So I'm not using any water at all. And this clay is pretty stiff, and I have not used any water at all. Do not use a sponge if you can avoid it. Okay, so I have all my edges up. So I have one that's already further along as far as being perfected, and I cleaned it on the back as well. Okay, so, and I have some little handles that I'm going to attach. I, for this one, I did asymmetrical handles, right? I have a triangle and a half part of a circle on the other side. But maybe I want to have two handles that are the same. You could put them together, you know, lining up if you want, or space them out, do something more creative with them. Okay, so I'm going to have to do some scoring and slipping. If you don't score and slip your handles, they're just gonna fall off. All right, so that's just bad craftsmanship. It's a waste of clay, waste of time. Everything you do in life should have purpose. Okay, so I'm just gonna refine this a little bit. So they are gonna kind of get a little bit smaller after I attach them, because I'm gonna have to do a little bit of blending. So you, you might wanna make them just a little bit bigger than what you're gonna end up wanting. Okay, so I'm going to attach this one here. Okay. It's going to do a little edge of scoring and slipping on the back. Okay. It's kind of like scribbling. I'm going to do that entire length of that edge. Some of you guys don't score and slip deep enough. I mean, you really want to get in there. It's like you're making Velcro. Okay, so don't be afraid to kind of gouge it up. Okay, so I'm going to attach it here. So it's going to be about that long.
Okay, so you can use the slip, the slimy stuff that's already prepared in the containers in the classroom. Or if you have a little bowl of water, that works too. All right, so I'm just gonna kind of make the clay slimy that I just roughed up. I'm gonna do that on both parts. That's the thing is you really have to be very organized with your clay. You can't be lazy. If you're gonna be lazy, might as well not even bother. Okay, so that's pretty good. All right, then I'll try not to mess it up when I attach it. I'm just gonna use my nail and going backwards to kind of clean up this line here. So this really is about precision. Okay, so obviously when the clay is really squishy and smushy and wet, you're not gonna be able to get a lot of precision. So you're gonna have to clean it up at different stages. You're gonna have to do sanding, scraping, you know, to make up for the wet stage. Okay. I was gonna show you angle that so you guys can see what I was trying to do there. Just trying to get that nice and clean, that transition. Okay, and obviously I'm gonna have to do a lot on this side too. The easiest way to get this side when the with those crevices is just get that wet paintbrush. Sorry. Just gonna go over it till it's clean. Okay, so I have to repeat that process to do the other side. All right, so as far as your designs, um, just keep it geometric, right? Abstract, geometric, you can use little bottle caps to stamp, marker caps, just like you did in the beginning of the year. Just don't get them stuck, All right? And then I have this nice form here. All right, so just think about something that's kind of interesting. Don't overdo it. You can go over your lines. Okay, so just remember with Kandinsky, he made every kind of circle you could imagine. Half circles, right? If I want just a half circle, then maybe just trace half the bottle cap. And then just put a straight line. All right, so you just have to think of a composition that you like. Um, I would prefer to carve with a pencil, but I'm just using this. So maybe you'll think about like with this one, obviously you probably want some triangles, some squiggly lines, right? If you cut any holes, only do it on the handles. Don't do it in your tray, otherwise it's not gonna be functional. You also can use a fork, right? If you wanna get some nice clean lines and you can run it along a ruler if you want it to be organized. So whenever you overlap, you're going to have some weird pulling, so you might have to go clean that up. And this will need sanding when it's dry. So I have a nice little Rubik's Cube. Okay, so maybe I'll turn that into a triangle. All right, so you just figure out a composition that you like, right? have some variety in your art. Try to see how you can balance things, right? If I have two squigglies here, I probably want to have one over here. I like asymmetrical symmetry. Right, so that means I'm not trying to make everything like a butterfly balance. I'm just, I want to have balance, but it's not going to be mirror image. And then maybe I'll have some dramatic dots. Okay, so something like that. 
don't, you know, try to avoid putting hearts and things like that. Hearts are not abstract. Like, you know it's a heart when you see it. It has, it's a symbol, it's not abstract. So try to keep this just about shapes and lines. Okay, so that's pretty much it. And then don't forget to sign your work and put your period number as well. I'm gonna put some texture on this. I'm supporting it and I'm just gonna run the fork. Right, so obviously I would I would add the other handle before I would consider myself done. Okay. So when you do your lines, make sure they're, you know, not too deep where you're actually cutting your form, but deep enough that they show up. All right, make sure it doesn't go all the way through the other side. Otherwise, your form is going to fall apart. Okay, so that's it.